I'm going to start off by asking Fran, who's got, who's uh, just, uh, just ascended <laughs> 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 to a position of uh, that I wouldn't want to have uh, as general secretary of PCS. Um, <laughs> Taking the lead in the trade union movement, especially fighting against uh, the Rwanda policy. Fran, over to you. Thanks so much, Will. I have to say, 10 days into the job, it's all very, very weird. I've been president of PCS for the last five years, but suddenly having no marks on Walker has been a, a big sort of shock to the system, but obviously I'll have to do that in my own way. But I just want to start off by saying it's a real privilege to be at this event today and be asked to speak. And it's great to share a platform with people, whether they're on the, in the room or online. Candy, Edwin, I know very well from a time on our NEC, and Candy may tell you different, but I think she loved every second of being on, on our NEC, and we had some good times uh, working together. Candy, your work on campaigning against the housing asylum seekers on the Bibby Stockholm barge has been absolutely fantastic. And we've been Charlotte Khan can't be here but from Care for Calais, but she's also a very good friend of PCS and we work closely with Care for Calais for a number of years now in our collective campaign around the Bones pushback policy, but also the discussed in Rwanda policy, and obviously I'll come on and say a little bit more about that. Later on in my speech, I'll discuss our innovative innovative joint work on the publication of the Safe Passage Visa Scheme for Refugees and obviously that's something we've done jointly with Care for Calais. And Keba, I know I think you're online and your support for refugees in Wales is unwavering. Your commitment to ensuring that they're treated with dignity is exactly in respect is exactly what our movement is all about. So friends, as we heard in the opening session this morning and obviously I made part of it is long long way from Hexham in Northumberland this morning uh, with the Sunday train service so I'm glad to be here for our session um, the far right are emboldened and they're on the march they've been bolstered by the likes of Rishi Sunak and Sarella Braverman whose hateful and incendiary language has inflamed further division when refugees and asylum seekers are likened to a swarm and a hurricane the inevitable consequence is the total dehumanisation of some of the most desperate people on the planet Throw in a catastrophic cost of living crisis, the effects of which have been felt by so many, then you have a deadly mix that means there's fertile ground for the far right to grow. And the stats show we've got an awful long way to go if we're not just going to stand up to racism, but actually we're going to defeat it. More than a third of people from ethnic and religious minorities have experienced racially motivated physical or verbal abuse. A panel of UN experts said that black people in the UK are living in fear due to structural, institutional and systematic racism. And a two-year research project found that Britain isn't even close to being a racially just society. Those revelations and others paint a pretty grim picture. And with the outlook so bleak, there's never been a more important time for all of us to stand up and to fight back. And that means not just kicking the Tories out of government, but also organising hard across our communities and in our workplaces. And I was struck by something that Candy said in the previous session about, you know, holding Keir Starmer's feet to the fire as well in terms of any incoming government. We can't rely on change in, in, in government to be a silver bullet. And that's why at PCS we do take this issue incredibly seriously. Our anti-racist and anti-fascist strategy is an integral part of our mission to tackle racism in the workplace. We're constantly developing online practical resources and advice for reps and activists to use and we provide assistance for reps and activists who want to get more involved with other organisations that are fighting racism including of course stand up to racism but in terms of fighting back as well as the work PCS to, does to educate our members and take up the fight against racism in the workplace we're also trying to use our position as the biggest civil service union to push for radical policy change one area where we've done that to great effect over the past two years is in taking a stand against this government's appalling treatment of asylum seekers. The government was asking our members and the border force to turn boats packed with asylum seekers in the channel around and turn them back to France. It was an unbelievably cruel and dangerous policy and our members wouldn't stand for it. And I think that the strength of our campaign has been the fact that it was member led. It was our members that came to us and said, we don't want to do this. Will our union back us 
if we're prepared to do something about it. And that's really how all of this started. We sought legal action and took it. And just a few days before the court hearings were due to begin, the government dropped the policy. I'm incredibly proud of what we achieved. But we, of course, we couldn't rest on our laurels because, of course, the government then came back to have another go, this time with one of the most heartless and downright nasty policies they've come up with yet, the Rwanda policy. And that would see asylum seekers deported to Rwanda where their claims would be assessed. Rather than opening our arms to the desperate and the vulnerable, this rotten government wanted to kick them onto a one-way flight to a country 4,000 miles away, and that's grotesque. Again, it was our members in the Home Office and the Border Force who expected to carry out that, un unlawful, that awful policy. So again, we took up the fight once more, working, working alongside other organisations to fight the government in court. The fight went all the way to the Supreme Court, and in November last year, they un unanimously ruled that the policy was unlawful. <laughs> victory and everyone who's involved and supported the campaign should feel really proud but of course the government is trying to revive the doom rewinder plan and let me be clear pcs will keep on fighting it every step of the way and we intend to do everything within our power to continue the struggle whilst we were campaigning and fighting the rwanda plan we were working hard to try and develop a humane alternative so what pcs tries to do is not just articulate what we don't want to see but articulate what we would like to see and what would be a progressive way of dealing with these issues. So we've done it with tax justice, we've done it with social security, we've done it with austerity, and our most recent alternative vision has been around immigration. We came up with this alternative because the boats keep coming and people keep dying and it has to stop. So working really closely with Care for Cali, we published our safe passage visa policy, and I was really proud um, in the autumn to alongside Paul O'Connor, who is our head of bargaining, to go to the Labour Party conference to articulate very, very clearly what it is we want to see and how we believe things could be positively changed. So that plan would issue asylum seekers with a travel visa to enter the UK and they would enter the asylum process as normal. Despite what government ministers might tell you about their own plans, our safe passage visa is the only way to stop people getting into boats and making that crossing. There are so few legal routes available that people are forced to take even more perilous journeys to get to the UK, and that policy would put a stop to that. We're continuing to publicise it, and if anybody wants more information or wants to get more involved in our campaign for Safe Passage, please do get in touch with us and I can get some of the material to you. The work that we've done, though, has been to stand up for refugees in recent years, has been incredibly well received, as you might expect. And as the new General Secretary of PCS, it's an honour to lead a union with this track record, and our work in that area won't stop on our commitment on that. But there's one inc incident in particular I want to highlight, which serves as a constant reminder of why we do what we do. Last year, the then Immigration Minister, Robert Jemnick, ordered mules of cartoon characters on the walls of a Kent Asylum Seeker reception centre to be removed. The murals, which include images of Mickey Mouse and Baloo from the Jungle Book, were removed because Robert Jemwick thought they were too welcoming and sent the wrong message to those children. He wanted to make clear that the centre was a law enforcement environment and not a welcome centre. The centre takes in unaccompanied asylum seeker children, and some of those lone children are as young as nine years old. It's a level of callousness that's impossible to fathom. But for all the energy they put into making the lives of refugees miserable, we're on the other side with a hundred, a thousand times more energy as we take a stand and give a voice to the voiceless. So friends, as we've discussed, we have a long and tough battle ahead of us. The conditions are right for the far right to continue growing and inevitably for asylum seekers and refugees to bear the brunt. As we enter this general election year, things are only getting worse. And that's why all of us here today need to take back to our unions and our workplaces a renewed commitment to keep fighting. My union, PCS, will be there, and I look forward to standing shoulder to shoulder with everybody here in that fight. Thank you so much for listening.